My wife says it best, I guess. I bleed orange and green. The rattlers will strike and strike and strike again. Hi, I'm Kristen Ledlow, and we are here on the Hill, beautiful Florida A&M University in Tallahassee. Now, the Rattler Nation is celebrating 50 years of its Rattler boosters. Now, since 1961, the boosters have meant more to this university than you could ever imagine. But don't take it from me. We're going to talk to four FAMU presidents as they reflect on life as FAMU students, FAMU presidents, and what it means to be a Rattler. This Good News Show special starts right now. This is a special edition of the Good News Show from Florida A&M University in Tallahassee. The foundations of FAMU were laid in October of 1887 with just 15 students and two instructors. What you see here is the heart of 13,000 students, 10 presidents later. But becoming part of the Rattler faithful doesn't just start with being admitted. It starts with being a student for life. Introducing our four presidents, Dr. James Ammons, Dr. Fred Gaines, Dr. Frederick Humphreys, and Dr. Walter Smith, as they reflect on life in the study books. I had a chance to go to the Orange Blossom Classic. When I was in seventh grade, the Orange Blossom Classic was down in Miami. Uh, it was one of the uh, signature uh, football contests among historically black colleges and universities. Finally got a chance to go uh, when I was in seventh grade and had a chance to see the Marching 100. And I left Miami a different person. From that moment, I said that when I go to college, I'm going to go to Florida a and University. I want to be uh, where the Marching 100 is. My freshman year, we played Southern. And uh, they were leading us. And the game was coming to an end. They had a very talented quarterback. And Sammy T. Marshall, our tackle, stood up. And the quarterback, a guy named Pope, from Southern was up jackknighting a pass uh, to a receiver. And because Sammy T. Marshall was standing, he put his hands up, caught that ball, ran 95 yards for a touchdown, and the stands emptied. And we started singing uh, uh, the alma mater and talking about what grows on the, the bush, uh, talking about the peas and uh, it was one of the most exciting games in Bragg Stadium uh, that we've ever played. But that was, uh, it was a great victory against a very worthy opponent and we had a great time celebrating. Campus erupted with celebration for beating Southern University. Coach Gaither stuck his head in a classroom that I was in one day and he just said, boys, says don't ever marry a woman who does not love her mother because she will not love you. And he turned and walked out. Yeah, I mean, that was all he said. And I, I remember it because it was a significant and profound statement. He didn't have to stop. I don't know why he stopped, uh, but he did. I was a transfer student from a junior college, Gibbs Junior College, which brought me in as a GED finisher. I never graduated from high school. I was a high school dropout. But Gibbs gave me a chance. And fam, you cultivated those chances. We had a faculty member who could write forward with one hand, backwards with the other, meet in the middle of the board with a completed sentence. Uh, he would ask you to multiply a five or six digit number times a five or six digit number and while he's asking you to do it, he is writing the answer to the problem. Uh, and a great sense of humor. Uh, he was a geneticist from Iowa State by training, but Dr. Evans was absolutely one of the most brilliant men I've ever met in my life. My department chair handed me an application for the American Political Science Graduate Fellowship. Uh, and he told me that uh, they were gonna award about 50 of those nationally. And he thought I had a good shot at getting one of them. So I actually filled it out because I had plans to go and get a master's and a PhD. 
And the day that I was informed that I was a recipient, a recipient of the um, American Political Science Graduate Fellowship was, was a real highlight for me because it paved the way for me to go to graduate school without financial difficulties. But you know what was really wonderful? I was able to work in the clinical laboratories at the Florida A&M University under the leadership of a pathologist whom you might have heard of, Dr. Ketchum and Dr. Lewis. And they developed confidence in me because by accident I was at the hospital one day and they were looking for a person to lay out a body to do an autopsy in the morgue. And I volunteered and everybody laughed at me until I did it. And when Dr. Ketchum saw the work that I did with that body in preparation for the autopsy, guess what? He said, you go back to Mr. Johnson, Miller Johnson, and tell him I want you to be hired. So that's where I worked as a student in the clinical laboratories. As a student, I developed this notion that that I could be president of Florida A&M. Uh, and so I had a, a special spot over in the library uh, where I studied. And I looked across the quadrangle over to Lee Hall, where the president's office is. And so as I uh, studied and prepared myself, it was for this, this goal, this professional goal that I had of being president of, of Florida A&M. Coming up, to bleed orange and green, that's what it takes to be a Rattler Booster. Our four presidents share what the boosters mean to FAMU. Now we've heard from our four presidents on their study hall days, but they can never forget the work of the boosters pushing this university to its greatest heights. Hear from our four presidents now on what this booster club means to the Rattler Nation. When you think about the organization now, you realize that they contribute more than just money. They help to identify people who come to FAMU, athletes and others. They do things for the institution that cannot be done with dollars provided by the, the legislature. Uh, they support the athletic programs of the institution. And athletics has a special mission, something that you get from no other aspect of the institution because it will actually bring people to the institution who had no knowledge of the institution prior to perhaps an athletic event. Uh, a good athletic program uh, just as it supports uh, the, the academic part of the institution, it recruits students because they want to be associated with the fun part of it, the winning part of it, the tradition of the institution. And it's wherever you go, you'll find a Rattler. I feel the same way about them that I do about other units that help to build strong Florida and m because you see, boosters are more than just alumni. They're friends of FAMU, and that's very important. They've made possible uh, the university having teams, uh, track, tennis, volleyball, that without their support, it would be very hard pressed uh, to have. You go into uh, Bragg Memorial Stadium today or in the new Lawson Center, uh, you see state-of-the-art scoreboards, the Jumbotron in Bragg Stadium, the um, state-of-the-art scoreboard uh, for the basketball arena. We couldn't have done it without the boosters. I mean, the, um, the way that they went about it with the individual members uh, of the boosters stepping up uh, in their own right uh, to make this happen uh, is just a, a testament to the 
uh, loyalty and, and support they have given to athletics over the years. If we could just continue to build the boosters organization and give support to them, not just financially, but otherwise, at their request, I think we help to build a strong Florida a &M. Coming up next, from study hall to Lee Hall, the presidents reflect on life from the top of the hill. Welcome back, I'm Kristen Ledlow and you're watching this Good News Show special celebrating 50 years of FAMU's Rattler Boosters. Now you've heard all about their experiences as undergrad students here at FAMU, but take a look as they highlight their presidencies. I believe it would be in recruiting students to the institution. Uh, I, I spoke at the first president's convocation about a young lady who walked up to my office and I had an open door policy for students and she introduced herself and she proceeded to give me a business card that she had made. I mean, she's, she hasn't been in school two weeks. Uh, and it was just refreshing to see this young lady with this kind of confidence to come to Florida a University. I learned about FAMU through my grandfather when I was a baby who worked on the farm at FAMU. And I have loved FAMU ever since. And the president before me, Dr. Benjamin L. Perry, Jr., and I used to ride the wagons picking up the garbage together with my grandfather. And who would have ever thought that I would become a president? You would expect it from Dr. Perry because Dr. Perry's father was a well-educated man. My parents were not, but good things happened to me, and I'm so proud that I became the seventh president of FAMU. A young lady came from Atlanta. She and her mother, I mean, she sat there in my office and they cried because things were not falling into place for them. Uh, they did before the day was over. Uh, she came back three months later, and she has this photo album with her, and she said, I want you to see what I've done. Dressed beautifully, well-mannered, well-tailored, but it is seeing students come to this institution who are striving, who are reaching for better, a better environment for themselves, their families, and their children, a better environment for other Americans to, to live in, to pursue the American dream in. So much of who I am today is because of Florida a and University. And what I wanted to do was to uh, do whatever it took uh, to keep Florida a and University as that shining star, uh, that beacon light, that uh, beacon of hope uh, for uh, generations to come. We went on to build FAMU from a seven school and college institution to an 11 school and college institution. Now we look at this next horizon, and that is, what is the next signature academic program that we should develop here at Florida a and Over the last three years, we've spent um, some significant time and effort developing the concept for a college of dental medicine. And we think that given the successes that we've had in our healthcare programs like pharmacy, public health, nursing, allied health sciences, uh, pre-med, pre-vet medicine, that a dental school makes a lot of sense uh, for Florida a and m And when you look at our land-grant mission where the centerpiece of a land-grant university is the extension of our expertise into the communities uh, that we serve. We think that a College of Dental Medicine using 
the model that we're going to use is the right thing for Florida A&M University to do uh, at this time. And the model that we're going to use with this school is to connect with the infrastructure that is already in place through county health clinics and also federally qualified health clinics. And so the students in this school would do two years of their biomedical sciences here on the campus. And then the last two years of the program would be spent uh, out in the health clinics, county and federal clinics, uh, providing service uh, in underserved communities. Coming up, we've taken a trip down memory lane, but what does everyone look forward to on Legacy Weekend? You'll find out in just a moment. Well, you've heard it all. We've talked to four presidents covering more than 30 years and more than 50 years of Rattler Booster support. But what do you look forward to on Legacy Weekend? Let's hear what our presidents have to say. We're looking forward to um, uh, reunions, uh, looking forward to generations of Rattlers uh, coming back to the Hill to uh, celebrate this important organization in the life of the university, uh, this tremendous support organization uh, to bring former athletes back and to support uh, the 2011 edition of the Mighty Rattlers of uh, Florida A&M University uh, as we uh, kick off this football season. It's the opportunity to, to laugh with uh, former presidents of the institution and also Dr. Ammons, uh, who we all think is doing a fantastic job in leading this institution to the next level. It, it's that small club that the, the stories become real, the reality of what was and what we hoped for, and yet we have an opportunity to look over the horizon to see what Dr. Ammons will do for this institution. And there again, it simply extends the legacy, if you will, of greatness of this institution. I plan to go back and see all of my colleagues who were president, to see my colleagues who were faculty and staff, see some of my former students who are now uh, on the staff at FAMU, and of course, browse through all of the beautiful facilities and just have a good time. Because, you know, I, I am a booster, an honored supporter, ardent supporter of Florida A&M. So, my wife says it best, I guess. I bleed orange and green. This weekend, as we have this uh, coming together, that we rededicate ourselves to the, the greatness of Florida A&M, that we don't let little stuff get in our way, that we stay committed and that we go ahead on and, and create a new future and a new beginning for us, the sons and daughters, rattle us all of Florida A&M University. Now, as we've reflected on 50 years of FAMU's Rattler Boosters, we look forward to the things to come right here in Tallahassee. I'm Kristen Ledlow, and thanks for watching this Good News Show special.